In VersionDog Demo Steps 1 and 2, we looked at how you can use VersionDog to centralize all of your programming projects using one standard workflow for all devices, and how keeping a documented change history is built into that standard workflow. We also looked at how quick and easy it is to get detailed comparisons between different versions of a project. But what if the standard workflow is not followed? And what about changes made directly on devices? In this video, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to recap on the standard version dog workflow for editing projects. Then, we're going to look at how you can use a regular version dog automatic backup and compare job for each of your devices, and how that job will detect changes to programs that were made outside of the standard version dog workflow. We'll also look at how the comparisons available to you mean that you can clearly see what was changed wherever it was changed and how that helps you troubleshoot quickly. So let's get started. What I'm going to show you here, you can try for yourself on any PC. To make that possible, we've added a very simple simulation to the latest version dog demo version. The launcher now looks like this and has this button, run dummy PLC. If your demo version doesn't have that, just go back to our website, click on test now and request a new demo version. Okay, let's launch the user client and I'll show you what we set up for you. In addition to the samples of real world devices, we now have a folder for production line one. It contains one component, dummy PLC, with the component type Windows INI. This project is on the server, but not present on this client at the moment. That's why it's greyed out. We can still see the change history. We've got one version of the project. We can see that the initial version of the program has been loaded onto the device and it's ready to test. Let's do that. Run dummy PLC. Hmm. Oops. Well, we wanted to leave you with a little bit of work to do. So there is a bit of spillage. So back to the user client. Now we'll check out the programming project. What we're doing here is copying the latest version of the project, the only version in this case, from the server to the client. Double click to open the engineering station. For this simulation, we're using something that's installed on all PCs and we've kept the project Super simple. And don't forget, we're following the standard workflow for editing projects, and it is the same workflow for all your devices, and that's what makes it easy for users to stick to it. One workflow is easy to remember. If you always do the same thing, it becomes second nature. Right, just minimize the user client for a second. Mm, let's try filling for 95 ticks instead of 130. Save. Always close the editor, that's important. And the way we've simulated loading the program to the device is like this. Show in file manager. This is the project file. Just drag it across. Green flash, program loaded. Well, it looks okay. We could probably fill the beakers a little bit more without spilling, but maybe we'd have to slow down the conveyor to reduce the jolt on acceleration and deceleration. Just try a few things yourself. See if you can find an optimum point. Okay, back to the user client. Keeping to the standard workflow, we need to create a version and check in. We can see the project has been edited. Create new version. 
not check in. Not yet. If we click check in now, we'll get a warning telling us that we haven't versioned our changes. A straight check in is used when the project has not been changed, but the component has. If you've renamed it, moved it, things like that. But we have edited the project, so let's do it right this time. Create new version. The comparator shows us the changes. We document them. Change request 1001. Stop splurge. Reduce fill time. Now, just say I'm in a rush and I don't document how much the fill time was reduced. Well, a quick comparison will always tell us. So we've got automatic documentation. Now, it's a two-step process. Create a version, then check it in. And here we can continue and do both of those things with one click. Now it's copied to the server and it's cast in stone in the change history. It's available to any user if they have the access rights and anyone can go back to any version anytime they need to. They can use it as a comparison partner or they can revert to it. Now let's go to the admin client and have a look at the automatic backup and compare job for dummy PLC. Jobs module. Here's the job. It's the same project tree. And here's where the job is configured. Actually, it's not automatic, not yet. According to schedule, yes, that's okay. And save. Now it's automatic. So this job will connect to dummy PLC once a day at 1 a.m. and grab the program that's running on it. I said grab. People use different words for this. Upload, backup, grab, pull. It all means the same thing in this context. Now this job is configured to compare what it has just uploaded from the device with what it uploaded the last time the job was run and to compare what it has just uploaded with the project, the latest version of the project on the server. And what it uploads, by the way, is the file that is written by dummy PLC every time a new program is loaded. Just so you know how we've organized this, we don't need to go there. Version Dog does that for us, as it does in the real world with real devices. It does it slightly differently for different devices with different project and program structures, current values and so on, but it's essentially the same process. Connect to the device, get the data. Okay, back to the demo. And let's not wait till one o'clock in the morning. Let's run the job manually now. Okay, running. It's different as we would expect. Previous run 130, this run 95, simple. And this is the comparison of what we just grabbed with the latest version of the project on the server. And this shows it's the same as it should be. After all, we just loaded the project and created a version. Now let's simulate the job running automatically once a day. Everything stays the same, day after day, until another change is made. You can set the system up to notify you if a difference is found by email. So you can set it and forget it. Right, I'm going to make another change to the project. I'll speed this one up for you. And I'm going to create a little bit of confusion. I'll make a change, create a version, check it in, but I'm not going to load it onto the device. Okay, the job runs overnight. Version Dog spots the discrepancy. 
Now let's say that you know that the real problem here is that you actually really need to increase the amount of beans in the beakers, but you don't know when that will be done. And you don't want to leave an abandoned version as the latest version in the change history. So let's go back to version two, keep everything straight. Copy it to the working directory of the component, create a new version. I personally like to make notes here sometimes for extra clarity. The latest version of this project now corresponds to what is running on the PLC. If there's ever any doubt about that, run a job, double check. If you don't do that, it'll happen automatically anyway. Right, now in the user client, we have access to job history here as well. Not just change history, but also job history. The admin client is where jobs are set up by users who have administrator rights. But in the user client, we can still do comparisons and we can still run jobs manually. I'll just simulate a couple more days. And again. Hmm. This still hasn't been done. Better make sure that somebody gets on with that. Meanwhile though, just to spice things up a bit. Let's suppose somebody comes along and makes a change to the dummy PLC program directly on the device. Doesn't tell anybody, then goes to lunch. Click the window to make a mystery online change to the PLC program. Okay, the red flash. And, oh dear. So what was changed? A couple of clicks. got the answer. What were they thinking? Let's revert. This one was working fine. Show in file manager, drag across. Normality restored. Okay, let's do that again. Now that must be a very small change. They can be the most dangerous ones. Okay, nobody notices. Overnight, the job runs automatically. Let's simulate that, of course, again. Ah, very subtle. This change is not in the project and it's not documented. So now I can make sure that it is done properly in the project. Or if I need to, I can revert back to a previous version. I think you can see by now how version dog can help with troubleshooting and even better than that, avoiding trouble in the first place. So why not have a think about it and work through a few scenarios for yourself, ones that would be realistic in your own situation. What can go wrong? Ooh. Hmm. Well, yeah. As we all now know, recovering from this situation is quick and easy, with no uncertainty. Run a job, compare, restore. One thing you need to know is that when you run a job, in this demo, dummy PLC has to be running. That's so that the FTP server is running, which corresponds to the upload type in the job configuration. Okay. So now you've had a good introduction to how version dog can be used as one single source of clarity on the project side and on the running program side. So now it's time for you to try it out for yourself. If you need any help at all, feel free to call us or email us at Avvezi. Maybe you want to set up the demo version to manage a couple of working devices and try it out for real. That's a good idea. We'll be pleased to help you with that if you need it. But whatever you decide to do with it, do have fun with it. And thanks for watching.